The federal investigation into 2021's January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol is the largest FBI operation in history. More than 1,200 people have been charged and over 900 convicted so far, and hundreds more charges are expected before the investigation concludes. But it has stretched the Bureau's resources, and it's often had to rely on the work of a bipartisan group of citizen investigators who came to be known as sedition hunters. Judy Woodruff spoke with one of these anonymous sleuths as part of her ongoing series, America at a Crossroads. In the beginning, it was intense. I would drop my children off at school. I would come home and I would be on it almost like a work day. And then once the kids were in bed, I was up until two, three, four, um, and then waking up a couple hours later. It takes its toll, definitely. Sandy, like many Americans, was paying close attention on January 6, 2021. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not gonna have a country anymore. As an angry mob of then-President Donald Trump supporters violently broke through police lines and stormed the Capitol building. And I just remember hearing shots have been fired, and I don't think I'll ever forget that moment in my life. In the following days, Sandy, not her real name, joined a massive citizen effort to identify the individuals who broke into the Capitol. She's been directly responsible for helping to put people behind bars, and she now has to hide her identity for fear of retaliation. One of the more insidious ones would be um, a J6er who is yet to be arrested. He started sending me, um, like, videos of him racking his gun. Sandy is today part of an informal community of dozens of ordinary Americans who came to be known as sedition hunters. Over time, they developed their own methodologies, guidelines, even a software application to keep track of every individual rioter, giving each one a pseudonym and compiling dossiers of evidence that they then turned over to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, along with the rioters' real identity. One of the, the first things is just getting a face. And there is one, one rioter, uh, Orange Goggle Spiker is his hashtag. Um, you can see him in the tunnel section of the Capitol um, beating up uh, the officers. Eventually, when I found his face, we were able to plug it into some facial recognition software. That popped up a picture of him at his work. <laughs> That photo led Sandy and other citizen sleuths to the rioters' real name, Scott Miller, which they submitted to the FBI, along with evidence of his actions on January 6th. He has since been arrested. One of the Sedition Hunters pages has all of these images that shows you who's been identified, who is not. So when you see like a lot of these, the blue here are the people who have been identified already but not yet arrested. Also following the investigation closely is Ryan Riley, an NBC News reporter whose new book, Sedition Hunters, How January 6th Broke the Justice System, spells out how the FBI has struggled to investigate the thousands of people who stormed the Capitol. The FBI was so overwhelmed with the number of tips that they were receiving. They had received hundreds of thousands of tips. And now you'll have the FBI going to the SLU saying, hey, can you help us out? We charged this guy. We want to make sure we got everything that he did that day. Can you give us a full report? They don't have the technological capabilities that they need to really pull this together. Is the FBI that far behind in terms of technology? They really just are sort of behind on open source intelligence. You know, one of the jokes within the FBI is yesterday's technology, tomorrow. Riley says it's estimated that about 3,000 people unlawfully entered the Capitol, damaged property, or assaulted police officers on January 6th. The FBI has charged more than 1,200 of them so far. But the citizen sleuths have identified and submitted tips on about 1,000 more. They're not going to be able to get to the number of people who could actually be charged. Uh, with crimes on January 6th. We're going to end this investigation when the five-year statute of limitations expires with people who are identified but not yet arrested. 
The FBI said in a statement that each tip is only the beginning of an investigation and that they are working diligently to gather sufficient evidence for prosecutors to bring charges in these cases. The FBI did not address the question of whether its technology is outdated, but acknowledged that its work has been, quote, greatly assisted by the many tips provided by the public, end quote adding it hopes these tips continue to come in. But Riley says the FBI's technology isn't the only reason for what he calls a backlog of January 6th cases. We do have a lot of people uh, within the FBI who are not so enthusiastic about bringing these cases uh, against people who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Are there still people in the FBI not enthusiastic? There are, and I say that because some of these individuals who were at the FBI have come out and said that publicly. They've resigned from the FBI because of these cases. Riley points out that in addition to current and former law enforcement officials pushing conspiracy theories, members of Congress have opposed investigations into January 6th and also contributed to misinformation about what happened that day. Some of the people who breached the Capitol today were not Trump supporters. They were masquerading as Trump supporters and in fact were members of the violent terrorist group Antifa. These included the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who in the run-up to January 6th took the lead in filing a lawsuit to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. He has said he plans to make public video footage from January 6th, but with faces blurred. We have to blur some of the faces of persons who uh, participated in, in, uh, in the events of that day because we don't want them to be retaliated against and, uh, and, and, and to be charged by the DOJ. If he's going to blur the faces because he's afraid that sedition hunters uh, are going to identify more criminals, um, it, it, go for it, buddy. Like, it doesn't matter to us. We can look at their clothing. This is the largest federal investigation ever undertaken. And although Sandy is at the heart of it, having helped identify hundreds of rioters, almost nobody in her life knows about her work. People want to know what you've been up to, and you have all of these exciting things that you want to say, and you can't. I'll just uh, default to the kids and what they're doing. You're not getting paid for this, are you? No, no, I haven't gotten paid a dime. This, this is literally um, your friends, your neighbors, um, your fellow citizens dedicating their time, their money, um, and their energy in uh, holding people accountable. We have some that voted for Trump, and then after J6 were disgusted by it because they took the peaceful transfer of power and just stomped all over it, literally. And then they call themselves patriots. I wish we were in a world where we didn't have to rely on groups of people. But I also think we're in a world where the FBI doesn't have the resources to do these investigations. Cynthia Miller Idris is the director of American University's Polarization and Extremism Research and Innovation Lab. We don't have the capacity in any law enforcement agency to handle a surge of political violence or hate-fueled violence when that when it's driven by misinformation that is believed by millions and millions of people. She says now that members of the public are engaging in violent extremist acts, it's a far greater challenge for law enforcement to prevent and to counter. It's no longer just on the fringes when you're talking about people in the mainstream spontaneously taking up violent action for a political goal. And I know everyone in my field is watching the year to come with a lot of concern. Although she says she believes the prosecutions in the January 6th investigation have degraded the ability of extremist groups to organize mass mobilizations, Professor Miller Idris says that the focus must expand to addressing the root causes of extremism where radical beliefs originate. We put almost all of our eggs in the basket of Department of Justice and, and think that the security side of it will solve it. It has to be there, but so does the Department of Education. And, you know, agencies that work with youth, that work with the elderly, that work with digital and media literacy. I would like to have an ability to counter this disinformation that led us there. It's incredibly frustrating. Sandy has seen the effects of disinformation firsthand 
in her own family. I haven't spoken to a few of my cousins since January 6th because they um, support it. We're, we're divided and I don't know how to pull us back together. I don't know how it's gonna change. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Judy Woodruff in Washington, D.C.